Yo, welcome back. We're back again today. I know you guys are happy. You know why? Because we gotta break some more knowledge off. You can't be ignorant no more. Yo, people, it's time to learn today. And I know that's why you're so happy. I see you over there just dancing because there's more knowledge and it's coming and we're going to get right into it today. So we'll tell you we're talking about another Ethiopian ethnic group and we'll be talking about today the Hamar or Hamar tribe, whichever you pronounce it, or ethnic group that lives in the highlands of Southwest Ethiopia. So they consist of two separate ethnic groups the hamar or hammer and the bana and the languages are almost the same and they call their language the hammer bana language or hamar bana language and the ham hammer live in close relations with uh related family members and the families live in circular arrangements and the cattle uh live and are brought right into the center of this arrangement in the camp so uh, beds for the young children and the women are built first then the tent frame is built around that and joining at the top of the tent frame the poles are bent uh, upward and then tied and the house like structures um, are covered in canvas mats in the rain season or the raining season and the th uh, thatch are covered covering the houses during the dry season now the boys and men usually uh sleep at the center of the camp near the cattles or the cots to protect them and to watch out the hamar things. take pride in their animal herds and use them for different things most herds consist of cattle but there are also goats uh sheep camels are also used to ride and pack things on now since the peoples are nomadic peoples which means that they move place to place they rely more on the cattle but they do plant uh such crops as sorghum beans and sesame but with the unintendance of the crops most yields are very 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 low and the hamar men uh, have very interesting trait about themselves they really have a very interesting trait um they wear clay caps on the top of uh of their head that are decorated and painted uh with ornaments and feathers and the men spend a big amount of time or uh, of you know on their hair and, and a big amount of time maintaining their hair and care is taken in to affect and not to damage this hair because it is a very prideful thing for them and they really do care about their appearance and their hair. Now this is where the famous African headrest comes into play and maybe you might know about it, maybe you might not, but if not you will definitely see it at the end of the video. And the men sleep on a small cushioned uh, headstool that keeps their hair, you know, in good care because their hair means a lot to them and a well-dressed man in the hamar society or hammer society will carry a spear a stool and wear cloth as a woman dressed uh well would wear a color men garment. may marry as many women as they see fit but only from within the hamar or hammer ethnic group and goods and cattle are given as a bride price to the woman's family by the man and his near relatives men are the protectors of the woman and children we must remember this and he is also a protector of all of his wives and his children especially in the hamar hammer society a man may be a protector to a widow or a divorced wife as well and the marriage celebration includes a big dance and a feast so the hamar love honey they love love love, love honey and they collect it as well and this is a major activity within the ethnic group and they move with uh their herd like we stated they're nomadic people and so they will uh stay for a few months where there is enough grass for their cattle to graze and their herd to graze and then when the grass is gone they set out uh and search for a new pasture and new pasture grounds now whole families will put their lives stock together and labor together to herd their cattle and there is a division in labor between age and sex and we must note this the young men work the crops and defend the herds while the adult men plow with oxen herd and cattle and raise beehives in the tree so the women and girls collect water on the other hand and grow crops like sorghum as we stated beans pumpkins and maize and they also look after the children and cook sometimes Though tasks like getting harvest in or raising a new roof calls for the invite of neighbors, uh, close neighbors, and in return for their help, uh, they're fed goat and given beer in return. The Hamar do not marry outside of their people as we stated. They do, do, do not marry outside of their people and do have herd raids from time to time uh, on other ethnic groups 
and outside of their ethnic group and other ethnic groups, as I said, or different cattle from different peoples that are neighboring, but they have no problem borrowing hairstyles, songs, and even names from neighboring African ethnic groups. So they won't marry outside of the Hamar or Hammer, but they have no problem with using, uh, let's say, a Romo name or, you know, um, you know, have hairstyles or take songs from other African The parents have a lot groups. of control over their sons. The parents get permission for the men to marry, and uh, many don't marry till they're in their mid 30s. So for any Anybody that's out there that's not married, yo, don't worry. But while girls, on the other hand, marry at about 17. So if you're past 17, yo, you're supposed to be married. So anyways, so anyways, the men, if they can afford it, they can have as many wives as they want, but women or the woman can only have one man in the Hamar Hammer ethnic group. Now, most women outlive their husbands due to the age, as we just you know spoke of. And if the woman becomes a widow, she has the power to overthrow uh, the younger brothers um, of her husband and their cattle and to own it only if his parents are already passed away. So the Hamar have a very unique ritual called bull leaping. I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about it, but if you don't, we're gonna talk about it. Bull leaping and this uh, has to be accomplished before a man can get married. This leap is a rite of passage for a Hamar man, and the qualities um, and this qualifies him to marry, own cattle, and to have children. The timing of the ceremony is up to the man's parents and happens after harvest. Invitations are sent to the guests, which uh, a strip of bark is sent to the guests with a number of knots in which they cut uh, off one part of the bark for each passing day till the ceremony, ceremony starts. At the beginning of the ceremony, cows are lined up in a row and the naked man has to leap on the back of the first cow. He must jump over all cows at least four times without falling to have the right to be a husband. The woman uh, do their um, um, singing and they accompany the man with jumping and singing like I just stated and everyone drinks sorghum beer and feasts for several, now several the days. man's sister also gets whipped. Yes, she gets whipped as well. She actually begs for it. She wants to get whipped. And this is for the future hard times that might happen uh, in you know their lives so her brother will remember her and his uh bond and to stick together and to you know signify the pain that they both went through women who don't get whipped are looked down on if you do not get whipped you look down on and the person who does the whipping on the back is called the maza um as for the young man leaping, leaping over the cattle, he is rubbed with sand to wash away his sins and dung is smeared on him to give him strength and his head is partially shaved. And there is a, um, a horn that is blown that signifies the bull jumping is about to start and the ceremony is about to start. And if the man is successful in a couple of weeks, he is, uh, will be able to marry any woman that he wants. He then will pay the marriage tax of 30 goats and 20 cattle over time. But if he fails, yes, if he fails, he will bring uh, shame to him and his whole family. Now, after the ceremony, the man is sent off with the Maza and the crowd goes into a very huge dance. This is also time for flirting on a large scale and the girls pick who they want to dance with and they kick them on their legs. I can't show you my kick, but they kick them on their uh, on the partner's leg to show them that they want to dance with them and also for flirting purposes. No, a woman is not married if she does not have a signature uh, mini dreadlock hairstyle and if she is not wearing a special necklace that means that she is not even promised for a young man uh, and is single to the community and she's single to the community. Within the language, there are 27 words that describe different textures and colors um, and each man has three names, a cow name, a goat name, and a human name. And the men also use the famous wooden headrest like I sp spoke about before, which keeps their hair from touching the ground and is also used as a seat The as most well. famous woman hairstyle is when a woman rolls her hair in fat and occur. Hamar women also wear iron bracelets, decorate their breasts with uh, lots of cowrie shells and wear um, bead necklaces. Married women wear iron wrapped in leather around their neck which uh, are engagement presents and these are worn for life and indicate their husband's wealth. Now the first woman has a necklace that the other wives of the same man does not have and the first wife also wears more necklaces to show how many wives her husband has. Now the first wife uh, lives a better life and has a higher status in the Hamar or Hamar community while the other wives do not. The men who also wear a clay head ring have either killed a dangerous animal or have killed an enemy. 
Now the Hamar believe in their traditional religion. For example, they believe uh, that natural objects like rocks, trees have, you know, have spirits. Now the Hamar also believe in jinnies or spirits that are capable of assuming uh, human or animal form and exercising supernatural influences over people. And um, in the Hamar religion, uh, Mingi is the state of being impure or ritually polluted. A person, often a child, who was considered Mingi was killed by force, or, or I'm sorry, or forced permanently uh, to separate from the ethnic group by being left alone in the jungle and or by drowning in a river. So today we learned a lot about the Hamar. I love these people. Um, I always love their hair design. Um, I mean, I think that they're a very, very good people and I've always, you know, I thought that they would have the trademark hair design you always know when you see a hamar or hammer girl and you always see when you know when you see a guy but for sure definitely a girl so as always we learn again some more about our people some more uncovering and you know how our people live throughout the world and uh, these people are very ancient people as well I also wanted to note that I've been getting a lot of messages about people wanting me to travel to different places to have um, discussions and to have open dialogue, which I have no problem with that. But if you guys could, I, it would be very, very helpful. I'm only one person and I would love to do this full time. I would love to, you know, um, educate as many of our people and people in the world as possible and share knowledge. Um, you know, every, no one knows everything. I don't even know everything, but to share knowledge and to obtain and to share it that's the main goal it's not about who's smarter and who knows more it's about sharing your knowledge and trying to help everyone get on the same level so if you could definitely subscribe like the patreon would help me out to travel to these places if you guys would like me to come and talk or accommodations we could always talk about that as well but the patreon account and or we can work out other uh ways for me to or to, for you to help me do this uh, full time, long term. I would love to travel. I've gotten a lot of offers to travel to different parts of the country and even outside the country, but I, as one person, don't necessarily have all the funds to go all these places all these times and I have a you know schedule as well. Everyone has a life, right? So, like I said, please like, subscribe, share this with your people, share it with anybody because I would love to do this full time and I would love to keep bringing knowledge to you guys and to the people and for us to just keep building. And you know, as always, leave your thoughts in the comments. If there's something I'm wrong about and I don't know, I'm never going to, you know, be mad at anybody. Just leave it and we can have open dialogue and we can help actually grow and build with each other. If you leave more information that maybe I missed or things of that nature. So once again, Patreon, visit the link down there, uh, like the video, and also subscribe and share it. You know, why not share it? You know, sharing is caring, right? That's what they say. So let's do a roll call. I haven't done a roll call in a while, so let's talk about it. Um, to all my black people in Niger, to all my black people in Canada, to all my black people in Panama, to all my black people in Honduras, Venezuela, in Mexico, in uh, Suriname, in Jamaica, in Haiti, in Cuba, in Dominican Republic, in Barbados, in uh, where else, where else, where else, Trinidad and Tobago, in Brazil, in Argentina, in China, in Japan, yeah I see you Japan, in Australia, in Malaysia, in the Pacific Islands, yo to all my peoples everywhere, yo blessed, love, be safe, always continue to learn and yo as I always say, I'm out, peace.
What's up, what's up? Hey! Shalom! What up? Hi! Happy 